After getting the Excel basics out of the way, I start my live MBA math classes with finance for two reasons. The first is that finance is fundamental to business school and every student expects to learn it. The second is that it helps me provide a survey of the high school algebra that you need for your MBA curriculum. The key first starting point within finance is to look at time value of money. That's what we focus on in this lesson. We build on that in the subsequent finance lessons. And the first time value of money problem that we look at is a very intuitive one, which is a situation where you have a certain amount of money, let's say $1,000, and you have an interest rate, let's say 10%, you're going to leave that amount of money in an account where it's going to earn a certain interest rate for a certain period of time, let's say five years, and the question is, to what amount does that thousand dollars grow at 10 percent interest over a five-year period? There are four variables in that problem. The starting amount, the amount of time, the interest rate, and the final value. When you know three of those, you can compute the fourth. In the interest situation, we know we can take the thousand and multiply it up to find out how much it will be after five years. But we can also solve related problems of that type. For instance, we might know that the starting amount of a thousand dollars grows to some future amount, let's say $3,000 in a 10-year period, and the question we can ask and solve with these same formulas is what was the interest rate that made that happen? We also can look at a problem where we can say we know the interest rate and we know the starting and final amounts, and the question is how long will we have to wait to reach our goal? And the last kind of problem would be one where we know the final amount, say a target for a major purchase or retirement or whatever that might be in the future, we have some sense of what the time frame is and also of the interest rate. And the question is, how much should we be setting aside today to meet those obligations in the future? In the MBA math lesson, you'll first encounter the formulas in the narrated lecture. And then when you work on individual exercises, you'll get down into the solution and you'll find Excel tutorials that take you step by step, two different versions of a solution path. The first solution path uses just basic arithmetic operators, the ones that we covered in the Excel lesson of this course, and you implement the algebra of the formulas directly. And then fortunately for you, the second track, the one that you'll actually be using once you get secure on the basics, is that there are built-in Excel functions that help solve these finance problems, which are so common, very, very simply by just feeding in the appropriate variables and letting the function know which variable you want computed for you. That can be done both with Excel and then we also, because some students want to know how to do that with a financial calculator, give you some instruction on financial calculators as well. In your finance classes, you'll find that there's a range of approaches that professors take. And even if you are responsible in your own work outside of class in using spreadsheets or a financial calculator, it is important that you do understand the formulas that we're covering in this narrated lecture because some finance professors will use only the formulas in class. And, of course, all finance textbooks will have those formulas in the material you're responsible for reading.